Good morning, everybody, and thank you for attending the today's Restaurant News Networking Group, Chapter 1. Uh, happy Passover, Happy Easter, and we are a group of restaurant vendors who are here to help each other and to also help any restaurant owner who has a problem that they would like to bring to us. And if you would like to uh, attend one of our meetings, please give us a call at 561-620-8888 or go to our website, trnusa.com. And if you would like to see what our meetings are like, you can go to our YouTube page, which is Today's Restaurant. We are um, now in the market for a uh, general contractor for this group. Uh, we had a change during the week, so we now need a general contractor uh, along with other categories. But, but that one is, uh, if we can quickly replace that, that would be helpful. So if you know anybody that was that would fit the bill, please let me know. So I want to thank a introduce a new face on the board this morning. We have Peggy West. Peggy, why don't you introduce yourself? Give us a quick intro, and then we'll do our intros so that you will know who everybody is here. And I'll double back to you after you've seen what we do, so that if you forgot something you can add it back in. So tell us who you are and how we can contact you. Okay, great. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for inviting me, uh, Terry in particular, and I'm glad to be a part of this group. Um, I work for Beach and Patio Outdoor Living, and we are providers of new furniture, and we also do repairs for uh, dining room chairs, bar stools, um, you know, anything that uh, needs to be refurbished as well as provide new equipment. And the best way to reach me is at my email, peggy.beachandpatio at gmail.com or my phone, and I'm a great texter, is 561-666-0427. Okay, so you, your company provides outdoor furniture? Yes. Mm -hmm. All outdoor furniture or any indoor? No, all outdoor. Mm -hmm. All outdoors, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and, all... and where are you located? Uh, corporate is at Pompano Beach. Oh, good. Okay, great. Yeah, we have a warehouse in Pompano Beach also. We make our own cushions, and that's where we do the repair work. And um, I'm basically covering from Miami Beach north to Jupiter. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank Welcome. You. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to uh, ask for our intros today so that Peggy knows who we are. And uh, I'm going to start out with Randy. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Randy Pomputis here with Heartland Payroll. Um, we do everything from startups to acquisitions, multi-locations, for anything and everything hospitality, including boutique hotels, which we're actually starting to see a big upswing in. It was never really one of my big verticals, but uh, getting a lot of getting, getting a lot of traction there from referrals. Um, now I can I can be happy to say that Heartland we are the exclusive payroll partner of UFG, the United Franchise Group. And I will be traveling this Tuesday back to Vegas for one of their big franchises. You probably all know them, Cyanorama. So mm -hmm. this is going to be our initial visit. And uh, it's been two years in the making. So their their growth this year, and it's key for our group here, the, the growth rate this year especially in South Florida with new units, new franchises is pretty impressive. I'll know more I'll know this coming week, but once I have all the details and they're looking for 
outside services and vendors. I'll be sure to share that with everybody. So very, very excited about the opportunity. Um, if you have any questions, payroll related or any, any client referrals, I'm at 585-622-2993. Great. Thank you. Uh, Sal, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Peggy. Um, so I'm Sal. I'm with Servi. Where's the thing? Hey, there it is. Um, so we make service faster for busy restaurants and bars. And I like to think like if your restaurant, if you know a restaurant that has patio furniture, that has an umbrella, we're a perfect fit because restaurants with terraces typically have a hard time providing excellent service to those areas. So what do we do? We are a QR ordering service that has a beautiful QR menu that can take the order and the payment and print the ticket in the kitchen to help reduce staff uh, on the front of house. So restaurants can uh, provide full service dining with one third the wait staff, which is really important for restaurants nowadays, having trouble um, hiring uh, for their locations. And um, we've been doing this since 2016. So we are pre COVID and we have years of experience. And one of the things I like to say is like, we solve the problems that Q ordering, QR ordering actually creates so we not only provide the solution we provide additional robustness to make sure it works for you know local restaurants and small and medium chains and things like that so uh my email address is sal at ser.vi um the website is get.ser.vi or get.survey and my number is 615-663-3663 great thank you uh peter good morning Okay, Peter. Okay, Peter, when you unmute yourself, there you go. Good morning. <laughs> Peter Robinson, Hudson Robinson Business Brokerage. We can't see you today. What? We can't see you today. Yeah, you know, I'm in a pair of shorts and an old shirt, and I don't want anybody <laughs> to know. <laughs> we all know that. Want to know. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, it, it's uh, look. I'm in a. I'm. I'm going to go out for a walk in a park. So, um, <laughs> I'm a business broker. Please don't call me. I would rather <laughs> uh, hang out and go to the beach. But if you uh, if you have a question, if you know someone who's selling their business, uh, different types of businesses. Uh, I sell not only uh, restaurants. I sell medical practices. I I sell restaurants and I sell medical practices and auto repair and medical and restaurants. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're very welcome to call me 561-445-8198. Everything is confidential. Thank you. Thank you. I have a leave for you, Peter. <laughs> I'm sorry, who said that? Peggy, new, the newbie. <laughs> oh, very nice. I look forward to speaking with you and... Uh, and uh, thank you for thinking of me. You're welcome. <laughs> Chris Puma, are you, uh, we can't see you either. Well, two things, I'm not gonna talk about my attire. I'm eating my lunch, so you guys don't need to watch that. And number two is uh, my bandwidth seems a little bit low this morning, so I don't, I don't wanna cut in and out as I speak. So Chris Puma, CEO, Skyline Analytics, uh, we are an outsourced financial planning and analysis and data analytics company. We specialize in the restaurant space. We do custom reporting for restaurants. We pull in data from all the systems within the restaurant and within corporate so that the C-suite, the owners, the operators have the best possible view they can of their data and their operations, obviously, to make the smartest data-driven decisions they can make on a day-to-day -day basis in close to real time. Obviously, a big target for us is labor optimization. You can cut labor by just a tiny bit and save millions of dollars a year. Cost of goods sold optimization. Um, pretty much any uh, controllable cost is our, is our primary target, the lowest hanging fruit as we start an engagement. Um, I'm not going to throw out my email and my phone number because I know you send that out at the end anyway. So if anyone uh, does um, you know, have a client who is talking about the pain points of their visibility into data or reporting, then, then we're the solution for that. So uh, give me a contact and uh, we'll, we'll discuss. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Who's on the iPhone 3? Who's on mute? 
Oh, uh, so that, 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 that might be me. Oh, it's Randy, Randy again. I'm sorry. Hello again. Uh, Good morning. <laughs> have, you, have you closed another deal since we spoke to you last? <laughs> anyway. For me? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> All right, Terry Ark, good morning. Good morning. Um, I uh, am a owner and a full, full customer service rep for Creative Business Impressions. I am a promotional products distributor. I uh, have been in the industry for now 20 years. I uh, started my own company in 2018. I like to promote items. So today I'm going to remind you that some of these restaurants do some catering. And this is a great little idea for someone to, uh, if they're doing some catering, you have your food and your drink and you only need one hand. You can have your phone in the other. So um, I nice. provide promotional products, everything from uh, the signs for restaurants, table covers, uh, tents, if anybody wants to do those kind of things, and um, logo, any type of logo item. And my email address is terry dot a r k e at outlook dot com. My phone number is five six one three zero eight one three nine three, and I'll put my information in the chat. Terry, I think about you every day. You know why? I'm so glad. See this? <laughs> this uh, I don't know if it shows up, but in the old it group, doesn't. you gave it us doesn't. all you gave us all uh, mouse pads. Yep. With your name yep. on it, so and yep. I use it here every. Every day. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's see. Chris Rodriguez. Uh, good morning. Uh, John and I are, uh, John Mulholland and I are with Strategic Supply Chain Partners. We function as an outsourced uh, purchasing department for our clients. Uh, we typically deal with small to mid-market restaurant companies, uh, one up to uh well, these days we're talking to uh, one group right now. It's got 60 restaurants and franchising all over the country. Uh, typically what we do is we negotiate a uh, better distribution agreement for them. Uh, second phase of what we do, we go to manufacturers and uh, negotiate uh, manufacturer direct deviated pricing. We're typically saving on the low end uh, around 7% 7, 7 on the high end, as much as 15% for our clients. Uh, growing rapidly these days, uh, there's tons of money out there to save people if they're just willing to uh, uh, be objective and look at their current programs and how we can alter them for them. So uh, we commit to our customers as good or better product quality for as uh, the same or lower price. Uh, that is something we're adamant about. Uh, nobody wants to uh, lower food costs just by cheapening uh, uh, the quality of the product being served. So. Anyway, that's what we do. Um, again, growing rapidly. We have a great referral program for everybody who's interested in talking to us. Uh, and John, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I want to add right now, I'm currently working with a chain that everybody's heard of, Backyard Burger. And they've gone through a lot of mismanagement, if you will, and they've shrunk the number of stores that they have throughout the U.S. When talking to them, they say, well, we're going through this change right now that is the best time for us to come in and help. Am I wrong, Chris? People always want to wait. Oh, we get the new website, blah, blah, blah. Actually, uh, when you're in the midst of change, that is a perfect time to come in because that's that's when we can have the best kind of impact. So, yeah, if you know a restaurant chain that's in disarray, needs some help, come see us. I heard they closed all their locations in Tennessee. Is that right, Sal? Do you hear that? <laughs> No, I'm not familiar with that. They had over 100 down to 14. They're based out of Nashville, Tennessee. Are you the John Taffer of uh, Florida? No, I don't know who John Taffer is. <laughs> yes. You don't know who is. John Taffer is? Let's go with yes. Bar Rescue? <laughs> oh, you know what? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Nailed it. Yeah, I, I saw Bar Rescue. I just didn't know the guy's name. That's one of my yeah. favorite shows. <laughs> I thought I was going to get Scooter McGavin again. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go. All right. Th all right. Thanks, Al. 
You, Sal. Thanks for showing up. Uh, Terry Lena, good morning. Good morning. I am Terry Lena. I work for Workwear Alpha. Can, can you hear her? I can. No. All right, Darren, what does she do? <laughs> I think you changed your input, maybe, Terry. If you click where it says, next where it says the mute, and just make sure you have the right uh, microphone selected. Or you can go to uh, Zoom Preferences Audio. Now you're muted. Um, so it's the first one. There you go. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, so if you click the arrow next to the mute, um, it should give you a, the ability to select your microphone and just select whichever one is active if it's on your computer or if you have an external mic or a headset. There you go. <laughs> It's kind of cutting in and out. So it sounds like you're underwater. Well, so, sounds like the school teacher on Snoopy. That was my favorite ever. All right. Well, while Terry tries to straighten out her audio, Darren, why don't you? Uh, <laughs> well, that's who you are. I don't know whether the muter or not. I'll yeah, try and I rap to the either. beat of the music there. But uh, <laughs> good morning, everybody, uh, and happy Easter, happy Passover to those who celebrate. Uh, I'm Darren Gall with Tracy.net. We are a communications consulting and solution provider. Uh, what that means is we help businesses and restaurants save money on phone and internet services or in increase their functionality by giving them features they may not have known they had. Uh, one of our key products for restaurants is we have a product that eliminates busy signals for people calling in. Not only do we give you the lines into your business, but also queue calls in the cloud so no one ever gets a busy signal and they can hear your business's uh, advertisement while they're waiting for someone to be able to pick them up. Uh, that service may sound expensive, but it starts as low as $85 a month, includes all the services and all the phone equipment as well. So Darren Gall, Tracy.net. That's T R A C I.net. You can find out more information on our website. You can also call us at 800 881 8899 or email us at sales at Tracy.net. Hey, thank you. <laughs> I'm still hearing that. Ter Terry? I'm sorry. Hey. That, I can't get the, the Snoopy thing out of my head. You're going to have to mute that. Can't. Yeah. Go ahead. I can do okay. a brief ad for Terry if you want, because um, I've worked with her. Uh, she actually helped out our robotics team. And I will just say that they took an embroidered and screen printed teach, uh, work shirts, mechanic shirts for our team. And they look absolutely spectacular. Every competition we've been at, people have been, where did you get those? So I've sent about seven or eight other teams uh, to their website and to reach out to Terry, which she told me, make sure you call her because she'll hook you up with a distributor. If you go to their website, you're going to overpay. So uh, she did a phenomenal job. Uh, Quality is spectacular. Uh, the Red Cap product line, absolutely phenomenal. The kids all love them. The mentors all love them. They're well ventilated, so everybody stays nice and cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing your commercial, Terry. I, I know your products Aww. well, and they represent many other brands. Um, they're amazing to work with. I would highly, highly recommend for any workwear needs. They do full restaurant. Uh, back office, front uh, the front employee, staffing type clothing, uniforms, outfits, spectacular products. I I, I thank you for Terry. <laughs> uh, are you back with us, Terry? No, no, still can't hear you. All right, Ron Weber. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody this morning? I'm Ron Weber. I work for MindLab. I'm representing a product uh, called Silver Saber. 
It's a device that fits over uh, 32 and 44 round garbage cans to help restaurants um, save money by avoiding their staff carelessly throwing away silverware and ramekins. I can be reached at 630-596-6527, R-O-N period W-E-B-E-R at mindlab.com. Okay, thank you. TRN Terry. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter, Passover, and Good Friday. Um, anyways, I um, handle the lead reports, new opening reports, what's coming in, um, and when they're opening. I have a report for Georgia and we have one for Florida. The Florida one is twice the size of Georgia. Um, don't know what's going on, but for every single restaurant closing, I've got one right behind it coming in. Um, these leads come out about the ninth of the month and um, they are second to none anywhere in the US. Um, I've been sending out sample reports to everyone and the ones that I've sent out have all come back with their credit card pays uh, signing up for the year. And what this detailed report consists of is where they're at in the phases of either under construction, permitting, um, processing, looking for a location. Then you're gonna get the name of the restaurant. Then you're gonna get the owner. Then you're gonna get a column that has a whole lot of other stuff that you is very valuable information. They're looking for three or four other spots. That would be a terrific lead for Peter then he could call them and find out where are you looking for a spot? You know, lots of that kind of, of stuff in that column. Then you're gonna get the address, zip code, city, phone number, and most importantly, email address. And many times they are the personal email addresses of the owners. Um, and also remember when it says info at, many, many times, over 50% of the time, that does go to the owner. They just don't want you to know their names, but we have uh, ways of uh, paying to get their names. So we do get those from the city and the state and it works out real well. Mm -hmm. um, so that report comes out, you're gonna get about, we've had in the last two or three months, close to 80 new leads, brand new leads every month. Um, that report is available to you if you wanna sample. Again, just uh, send me an email or call and I'll be more than happy to send it back. For those of you who like to email and text, my email address is Terry, T-E-R-R-I at T-R-N-U-S-A.com. And I'm happy to send it to you. Thank you, have a good weekend. Okay, thank you. Um, John Bunn, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Happy holidays. Uh, my name is John Bunn. I'm with the Bunn Company. We manufacture string tying machines. We're in manufacturing plants, furniture plants, wood plants, metal plants. We're in um, <clears throat> restaurants up in Quebec, uh, tying the, uh, for the chicken restaurants, tying the clamshells. Um, our, the Bunn knot is a slip proof slip knot. It is tamper proof. It cannot be duplicated by hand. Uh, therefore, it gives for delivery a much better security level than a sticker. As you can see, my phone number here is 800-222-BUN. Email is info at buntyco.com. And yes, Terry, you are right. Um, it does go to most owners. And our website is buntyco.com. Thank, Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh... Rob Smith, good morning. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everybody. I am Rob Smith, as Howard introduced me. Happy uh, Good Friday to everybody and happy Pesach. Um, I solved the labor shortage for QSRs, small to mid sized QSRs, by uh, filling that hard to fill position of a cashier with a self-ordering kiosk like you see behind me. 
self-ordering kiosks improve the experience for the customer because people like to buy with their eyes. So visual menus are way more um, usable than a, a written menu. Uh, and they increase the average ticket because they uh, deploy automatic upselling. They increase order accuracy. There's no more orders lost in translation and they legitimize small businesses by providing big business technology. Um, if you are a QSR, you're doing business with a QSR, then you know somebody who would benefit by using a self-ordering kiosk. You can reach me at 561-609-6405, or you can email me at rsmith at touchsuite, S-U-I-T-E dot com. Uh, earlier in the week, we, we were on the turnpike and uh, at a rest stop, and they have kiosks in the rest of, I don't know if they're yours or not, but they, uh, so I have a question that sure. it, in, in the rest stop, there are maybe five or six different restaurants and like in a food court and they have the kiosks. Do the kiosks take orders for an individual restaurant or can you order from several different restaurants on the kiosk? Is that set up yeah. that way? Yeah, we we can set them up so that they work for like ghost kitchens where there's multiple um, business entities in one kiosk and the orders get sent to whichever restaurant you order from. So, yeah, I mean, typically the install is for an individual restaurant, but there are instances where they have multiple entities in one kiosk. Yeah, Rob, I on that, can it go to multiple payment systems or is it all tied into just the one payment system? No, it would go to multiple payment systems. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I was yeah. wondering about that because you know, if you go in there with a family, and one person wants wants uh, Nathan's, and another one wants Dunkin' Donuts, and they'd be yep. running all over the different kiosks. It can also split <clears throat> the order into different um, categories. So, like if you go to a boba tea place, or even like if you've been to a Wawa, when you order at a kiosk at a Wawa, their food is prepared at a different station than their drinks are prepared. So it can split orders that way as well. How about Bucky's? Oh, Bucky's! <laughs> Actually, Holy I don't cow. know. I don't know if you've seen Wawa's expansion plans, but Wawa is about to build a series of uh, units that are much bigger than the Bucky's. Oh, oh my no God! Way. Yeah, they, they can't have a better barbecue <clears throat> brisket. I'll tell you that, that. I don't know. That I don't know. But Holy they make a pretty cow. good hoagie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did I miss anybody? Or Terry, is your voice back? Uh, let's let's try. No, uh, I I don't know enough to help you. I think Darren did a terrific job. He always does. He's my tech go-to guy. He he's uh, unbelievable. He just he he could probably do this for everybody in here. Yeah. <laughs> We, we sell all these systems, so I certainly know them pretty well inside and out. So yes, I'm completely Zoom certified on all their platforms. So anything about Zoom, I can certainly help you with. All right. Uh, I am Howard Appel. I'm the founder and publisher of Today's Restaurant News since 1996. And uh, over the past uh, 10 days, we have done a email a video e-blast for strategic supply chain uh kevin's not here today but uh i worked with kevin on it and got a huge open rate i think of 26 percent so a lot of people saw it I, uh, I don't know other than that i don't know what happened down the road but uh, a tremendous amount of of interest in the service so uh, if any of you would like to do an email blast or a video e-blast, please get in touch with me. We have added a tremendous amount of new people to our database in different states. We just added California, New York, New Jersey, I believe Tennessee. So we're, we're, we're expanding our horizons. Okay, anything else? Anybody else wants to contribute at the moment. I'm going to double back to Peggy. If there's anything that you might have forgotten now that you've seen us, uh, please 
feel free to do it now. Okay, well, thank you. And it was great to meet everybody officially. Um, I just think I forgot to mention that I do sell uh, furniture, dining furniture to commercial buildings, as well as hotels, and also condos and homeowner associations. And everybody lives somewhere. So even a referral to your board or your property manager would be great. And um, uh, I guess I'll have to call everybody for some pricing, but um, I'm very interested in talking to a few of you one-on-one. -on -one. And I also uh, have some other network groups I belong to, and I'm great at making joint calls. If somebody wants to take a half a day and uh, run around together and make calls to different places, uh, appointments, no appointments, uh, you know, I could make appointments with my clients and your clients, and we could uh, introduce each other. So, okay, well, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, for um, sure. Um, as I said, I was totally unprepared today, so I do have an article that I came across yesterday that uh, a new study shows that diners want personalized loyalty offers you know a lot of restaurants and airlines and rest and hotels have loyalty programs but they're not personalized and it's not easy well I, i'm not an expert on this by any means and I, as i said i'm uh just came across this yesterday uh I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Chris, if, have you ever had any experience with personalized uh, loyalty programs? We... Uh, not to date, no. Right. Uh, I would need to understand a little bit more exactly what, it, I mean, are they customizing it to that individual's needs in terms of how they would use the program? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read. I, th I think a good example of that is what Starbucks does. I mean, when you sign up in their rewards program, uh, as a prime example, they know when your birthday is. They send you a free coffee notice on your birthday. They know what your likes are. They know the areas you're in. Uh, they'll even, if you have location services turn on, they'll actually prompt you at times a day when you normally would buy a coffee and say, hey, there's a Starbucks right here. If you want to stop in for your order, place it now. It'll be ready when you get there. I mean, it's it's crazy. I, I don't use it myself, but my wife does. And it's amazing how accurate they are of knowing, hey, it's three o'clock. Time for that afternoon pickup. You know, it's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, do so I, I guess if that's the definition of personalized, yeah, I have had some experience with that kind of stuff as a user, not as with a company implementing them. What I was amazed in this article, it says when you, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Jeff is not here today. He could answer this, but the, uh, when you use your credit card, the restaurant can can get information about you to use to produce the loyalty program. Uh, then, let me read this one or two pa two sentences. It's interesting. It says. 84% of consumers currently enrolled in an average of five loyalty programs, which I think is kind of low at this point. Uh, it, it may seem like, it, like an easy task to make the cut, but the truth is that the diners are not afraid to ditch loyalty programs that they don't, that don't offer immediate value. 69% of loyalty users have left or become inactive because the programs wasn't perceived as being valuable to them, just as you said, Darren. While 49% say they will be they will leave if they're not rewarded quickly enough. Diners want to be surprised with immediate personalization offers. Uh, I know when I get the, these offers in the mail all the time, you know, you come in today and get 20% off or whatever, you know, that's, that, that, if it's directed right towards you, you'll take a look at it. And any, uh, 
Chris Pumo, do you, you deal with things like this? I deal with, with a ton of stuff like this. I'm constantly analyzing loyalty programs for their return on investment and their effectiveness. What you described there about that needing that immediate return on investment, that you need to feel that that loyalty program is delivering you value. There, there has to be an, uh, an incremental difference between the value you perceive and what you have to do or pay to opt in. Otherwise, people will opt out. People are very, very... Um, adverse to sharing their personal information. And so there has to be that decent value proposition or they will opt out and they will get out of that program. And as laws change and become more strict related to PII um, and what information these restaurants can collect about people, honestly, the loyalty program is one of the most valuable programs a restaurant has because it's a mechanism to get them to opt back in. It's, you can't just collect this information and keep it anymore. They have to physically opt in and stay in. And then they also, beyond that, have to say you're allowed to reach out to them. So it's a very interesting dynamic landscape that is constantly changing. But uh, yeah, loyalty programs are, are high on our list of, of data that we analyze. And yes, we go to the area of personalized, personalized orders, like kind of what Darren was referring to, not only the time of day that they typically come, but what are their favorite items? You know, turning a Saturday customer into a Tuesday customer when your Tuesday business is typically slow, huge, huge uh, return on investment for many of these restaurants. Rob, I'm, I'm, did you once mention that you have that information uh, as to what a person ordered last time? Yeah, we definitely integrate with all kinds of loyalty programs, including personalized loyalty programs. So the difference between a loyalty program, you mentioned that, you know, you'll get a coupon for 20% off and that may generate some loyalty from some customers. But if it was, right. if you ate bacon cheeseburgers and it was 20% off just bacon cheeseburgers this week, that would be a personalized program that was geared towards you. One of the most famous ones I think is CVS. If you go, if you're a CVS yes. loyalty member, yes. when you get your, you print out your, your uh, coupons, they're very specialized. They're based on what you purchased the last time you were there. Usually you'll go buy shampoo. And then the next time you go, you'll get a coupon for shampoo. So it's definitely something that millennials are looking at loyal, you know, customized, personalized loyalty programs. I mean, a basic loyalty program is better than no loyalty program, but personalized is really starting to hit home. People are looking for something personalized. They want where they go to know a little bit about them because it makes their purchase easier. And Howard, take it to another in another direction is you can figure out from the loyalty program who your best customers are, what demographics they fall into. So as restaurant chains expand, they can look to zip codes that house those people. They can use it for geospatial, like location selection and things of that nature, or even not buying new locations, even in their current location, how to target other customers who currently don't come to that restaurant that are similar to their best customers. They need a date night uh, discount. Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> That's Thursday night, if you need to know. <laughs> yeah. well, and all of this information that's being collected on all of us is, is, is tremendously valuable to the, the, to the company that's using it. Uh, data is data is king. That's what it is. Data Everybody's is king. Right. Aggregating data. You I mean, know, no. though, that could have a downside, too, though. You got to kind of be careful with that because that, then everybody knows everything you're doing all the time, what you like, what you don't like. I, I, I'm, I'm, I go both ways on that one. I, I like to go in and they go, oh, you want your usual? Yeah, I'll have my usual. But then what else do they know? You it's know, really you kind of. But it's really too late to be worried about that. That literally is happening to every single one of us, whether we know oh, it or not. Right. They, they you're know right. what time you wake up. Yeah. They know what time you have coffee. Yeah. They know what time you leave your house. They're you're tracking right. everything on your cell phone. It's Absolutely. unbelievable. The amount of data on people is unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, and if you, you use Google or Gmail, I did. Yep. <laughs> if you use Google or Gmail, they know everything about your yeah. aspects of what you're searching for, what sites you're going to, what you're purchasing. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that, that data is out there, whether you know it or not. Yep. Oh, it is. It is. I, I always buy products that I hate. So they really, and I Google things that I really am not interested in. Well, I hope you Just hate to mess them up. 
Do you hate kiosks? <laughs> I, mean, I buy that... everything on Amazon, so <laughs> I would like to comment have... on the whole issue over uh, the you know, like for the franchise industry. I know there's a company out there, or at least probably a couple of companies out there, that when a franchise is looking to expand to a different location, they can get the demographics. Um, uh, you know, age ranges, everything from job, job, uh, the types of jobs to the income for that area, all that kind of stuff through uh, the franchise associations. Um, they That's they true. have access to that kind of thing. And I've dealt if, with that. Before. If you if you do watch Bar Rescue, Mulholland, yeah. Yeah. you'll 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 see that at some point in the show he will meet with his team and he'll tell them of some of the statistics that he has in the area of where that bar might be. He knows what the, the age age range is. He knows what the uh, household income is. He has all that information. It's almost like, it's almost like public information now. Yeah. And you can get that information from a city, a city, city, yeah. website, yeah. Yeah. Um, city access yeah. website. Demogra demographic information like that is readily available. Yeah. Demographic information. And like everything is available. <laughs> Lifestyle Every. segmentation, all of that's readily available. Yeah. Bad. I'll start watching Bar Rescue now. <laughs> <laughs> what about Restaurant Impossible? Is anybody watching that show? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Ever since we met oh, yeah. Robert Irvine, he's great. Did yeah, you see yeah. the article we did for? Uh, no, I want to find it though. I knew you were going to do that. Where can I find that? It was uh, sent out Monday morning. Monday? Last okay, week, I think. So go on the blogs. No, it's not okay. on the blogs. It's Is a it? Monday morning blog. Yeah, yeah. On the Mon Go on the website okay. and go to the blog. Okay. I Sorry. Will. Thank you. Um, yeah. I anyway. think you'll like it. Well, like I said, I'm totally unprepared for today. But you did great. Everybody did great. We have new people. We're excited. People are here. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question that I asked in the earlier group, and uh, got some very interesting answers. Uh, you know, this is a holiday holiday week. You have uh, people celebrating Passover. People celebrating Easter. What memories do you have of your childhood, of your family getting together, or your grandmother or your mother preparing a certain meal? Uh, I mentioned, okay. I mentioned in in, in uh, for mine, my grandmother. For those of you who don't know what this is, I'll explain. Kefilte uh, fish is uh, it's a, a Eastern European. I don't know. It's like you eat it once or twice a year. It's it's a chopped fish that's molded into a to a shape. It's disgusting. But anyway, I remember my <laughs> grandmother with a hand grinder putting the fish in to to grind and mash it all up and make it. And that, that I hated the smell. I hated to look at it. But that's stuff that I remember, and I'm sure that we all have. So if you want to share any of that. You know, you might uh, you might have some other good memories as well. Uh, Terry Lean is dying to say something, but she can't. <laughs> I got a quick Easter story, if you don't mind. Go. No, go for Grandmother it. Grandmother would could never get through the thought of eating lamb meat. Ew. I could be so cruel to kill a little lamb, eat lamb. I got to go with that. So she came over for Easter one year. My mom's name is Barb. At the end of the meal, she goes, Barb, that was pretty good beef. And my mom goes, that was lamb. <laughs> she never said a <laughs> word the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> That's just plain. <laughs> yeah, and she Sneaky. Goes, this goes to show you, you got to try every food. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's really bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Matthew. sorry, I, I I really had to kill that one. <laughs> that that was good. That was good. Not really. Huh. No, it was. That was a good one. Anybody want to share any memories? Not now. Okay. <laughs> I got to 
sick taste in my mouth. <laughs> I'll, I'll share. I'll share when um, it's, it's not necessarily a holiday because my family is part. My mother's side of the family is part Sicilian. So um, we, we always when I was really young, my grand my grandmother and my great grandmother used to make their own pasta, um, lay it out on the bed uh, when it was when it was you know, dr drying it out and, and desserts and things like that. Um, everything was women in the kitchen having a debate over how much garlic went in the sauce and the men in the <laughs> living, room, living room discussing business and politics. So, uh, you know, my, my whole family relates to the movies, the Godfather movies and, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, you know, but it was, it was, it, was a regular thing the the bow ties uh i remember the bow ties on the bed with the honey and the powdered sugar and the uh when i was really young um it's kind of changed now but you might be not to eat at your house that's, that's, no, a, that's, that's a, a great <laughs> memory my mom had the yeah. same thing but she put a she put a cloth on the table and and i used to do that when i made noodles same thing yeah. Yeah, we, we had it on the bed because it was big and we always had a uh, family over or at almost every weekend there was something on the Italian side of my family. Well, that right. sounds fun. I'm going to officially end the meeting. I want to thank Peggy for, for coming today and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope we'll see you again. And uh, everybody have a great weekend. Great holiday weekend. Have Enjoy fun. the happy holiday. And um, what was I going to say? We'll see you all next week. Same.